Twice a year, the household meets to go through the next six months of engagements. It's done at home base, in the dining room at Kensington Palace, with the breakfast cleared away and Prince William on his way to school. Everything from policy to polo is considered. The most senior member of the household, the Prince's private secretary, Sir John Riddle, is also one of the newest. Formerly a banker, he joined just a year ago. Major Ronald Ferguson has been the Prince's polo manager for more than 10 years. The Equerries spend two years on secondment from the services, doing much of the detailed day-to-day -day work. And there's now an assistant Equerry, Captain Alison Ewan of the Women's Royal Army Corps. A forthright Canadian, Victor Chapman, looks after press matters. The Prince has settled his priorities in advance and has already agreed on a basic timetable. So one of the main points of this meeting is to decide which of his events the Princess will go to as well. Then she'll plan her own timetable in her own way with her senior lady-in-waiting, Anne Beckwith-Smith. First, the assistant private secretary goes through the draft timetable of the Prince's engagements. It needs tact. There's already a number of changes I had to make to the dates because the original dates didn't quite work, but they're mostly just a matter of swapping things around. <coughs> Uh, the Royal Academy thing I just put in really as a reminder. There's no particular reason why you should do it then. Um, but if you want to try and fit a few of those in, so... For instance, the Prince, the patron of the Royal College of Music, has been invited to a reception to help its centenary appeal. So will the Princess, patron of the rival Royal Academy of Music, be going to the Royal College? The Royal College of Music. Which are you coming to that? Oh, yes. The reception? There's also an outstanding invitation from the British Steel Corporation to visit Fort Talbot. That was the one that was <coughs> cancelled. That's right. Postponed last year. 